Oh my god, man. Oh my god. It's here. It's here. Your 200 subscriber one year anniversary Q&A video is here, man. And I just got emotional before I came on camera. So I'm smiling from ear to ear. Oh my god, I got tears in my eyes. I am... Wow. Wow. <laughs> I did not expect this. Um, this time last year, I began this YouTube channel called Big Fight Feel, which you guys know of. And I wouldn't know how it would go. I wanted to do it to give a platform to myself to speak on pro wrestling. And all I've wanted was to have a successful YouTube channel and for people to care about what I have to say. And I think from this time last year to this time now, I, I think I've done a pretty good job with that. And for the most part, I, I've done a pretty good job of building this channel up to where it is today. And we're sitting here doing this video with 216 subscribers. And it, it just means the world to me. You guys do not know how much this channel means to me. This channel, outside of my family, football, pro wrestling, which I watch every night, basically. This channel means a lot to me. And I put my heart and soul into every single video that I do here on the channel. And I try to make this channel the best it could possibly be for my viewers. And for my videos, I get I get some good feedback. I get some bad feedback. And that's okay. You're gonna you're gonna get that. You're gonna get that from people. But man, I'm just happy that at, from the start of the beginning, I just wanted to have a successful channel. And I wanted people to listen who are listening to care what I have to say. And there are people in the community that actually care about what I have to say. So I, it means the entire world to me for you guys and to give me this report here for the channel. So I'm saying it today. This Q&A video, this 200 subscriber Q&A video, one year anniversary video, this is for you. This is for all the people that have supported me since last year and has told me, you know, not to give up with the channel, keep growing, get your name out there and all that stuff. And you know what, man? This channel is only going to grow. I want some new things for the channel the next couple of years. Uh, maybe we get ourselves a new logo, a Big Fight Feel logo. If there is any graphic designer that is very good, if you are watching this video and you are very good at graphic design, hit me up on Twitter, at Colin underscore Joseph, and if you... And if you make me a logo, a logo with Big Fight Feel, I will personally shout you out on my Twitter, on here on YouTube, and my Instagram. I will personally shout you out on all three platforms. So again, if you're a graphic designer who's very good at making logos, hit me up on Twitter. And if you make me a logo, I will shout you out on all three of my platforms. I also the next year with this experience I want I want I want to make t-shirts. I know this might sound crazy but I want to make t-shirts that say Big Fight Feel on it and Joseph Conlon. I I got to find a website and all that stuff. It's going to take it's not going to be overnight like that. It's going to be a, a month exp a process but I want to start making some t-shirts for a Big Fight Feel and hopefully so, you know some of you guys will buy some t-shirts. To represent Big Fight Fuel. So I know I will. When um, when the time is right. And I do try to do this project. Maybe before maybe by 2021 hopefully. So we will see what happens there. Those are some of the things that I want to do over the next year. Here on this channel. So enough of me rambling. Let's just get to the questions. We got 16 questions to answer 
in this video and we're going to start it off with Roll Esquavel. I hope I pronounced the last name right. Right? If I did not, I am sorry. But Roll asked, do you think, who do you think is a more credible source? Jim Ross or Dave Meltzer? Well, Jim Ross, he is someone I do look up to. And he is my favorite commentator of all time. And I will never get tired of listening to Jim Ross. And he is the voice of my childhood, basically, is Jim Ross. But he's more of a commentator, in my opinion. So uh, who's more credible of a source? I'm probably going to go with Dave Meltzer. I mean, some of the stuff he says is bullshit and it's mo uh, could be wrong. But most of the stuff that he says, um, I think it's right. It's reliable, and you could trust that whenever Dave Meltzer has a news, uh, some big news to say, more than likely, uh, he is right. So to answer your question, Roll, I'm going to go with Dave Meltzer. And then Roll asked another question. He asked two questions. His last question is, do you think that WWE is limited since it is a public company versus AEW, which is unlimited, due to them being a private company and not relying on stockholders? Now, that is a great question. That is a great question right there. And I had a difficult time thinking about this one. If I had to give you an answer, I'm going to say, yes, WWE is limited because they got their big TV deals with USA and Fox, and they're trying to keep them happy, and they're trying to keep them happy with so big TV deals and the stockholders, I mean, that's really all they care about is the TV deals and their stockholders. It shows, too, that it shows when we watch Raw and SmackDown every single week because the shows, the shows are not good. I'll say that. Raw especially. SmackDown at least has some good stories. Raw has been trash lately. It's been absolutely trash. So to answer your question, do I think WWE is limited since it's a public company? My answer is yes. So thank you, Roll, for the two questions. I had to get a sip of Coke in there. We got two questions from Gamers Goon. Shout out to Gamers Goon. He's been on the channel before. We talked about NXT about a month ago. So shout out to Gamers Goon. He asked two questions. His first question is, favorite wrestler of all time? My favorite wrestler of all time is Edge. Edge is very cool character when I was young. He, I grew up watching Edge. Edge was a part of the SmackDown 4. I called it with him, Rey Mysterio, Kane, and The Undertaker. And I just loved, like, his theme music. I got so into immediately uh, the spear, his finisher, and his feud with Chris Jericho. I, I thought it was pretty decent. I thought that was a good feud for that world championship at WrestleMania 26. So, favorite wrestler of all time, Edge. What got you into wrestling? Okay, that's a good question. And it's a, you might... I don't know how you'll react to this, but I was a little boy, you know, ah, starting out like when your grandpa is talking to you, when I was a boy, all that stuff. So when I was a young boy, um, around five, six years old, um, yes, around six years old, every Friday night, I was a huge Star Wars fan. So every Friday night, I would sit down. And I would watch Star Wars for one hour. It was on from 7 to 8 p.m. And then after the show, uh, my dad put on uh, SmackDown on when it was on when it's Friday nights. It's on Friday nights now, but when it was in Friday nights back in 2008, um, he would put on SmackDown, and I was just sit, I would just sit down and watch it with him. I would just watch it with him, see what's going on. And I, I just came a fan right there. Every single, and then from there on out, every single Friday, I would watch SmackDown. Every Friday night. 
with guys like Edge, Kane, Undertaker, Rey Mysterio, Christian was on there, Ted DiBiase was on there. So that's what got me into wrestling. It was my dad that got me into pro wrestling. Austin Whitley, shout out to him for his question. He asked, even though time has passed, do you still think Cesaro should be a world champion? Absolutely, brother. Absolutely, Cesaro should definitely be a world champion. It's a crime that he is not a world champion because he's honestly one of the best wrestlers in, in the WWE. He is top five. Top 10 uh, best wrestlers on the main roster, in my opinion. He's very good. And it sucks that he is stuck in a dead tag team division on SmackDown. With Shinsuke Nakamura in a feud with the Lucha House Party that nobody cares about. So, he should absolutely be a world champion. Will he be a world champion? I doubt it. I doubt it. He's not Vince McMahon's cup of tea. If, if Cesaro, if Cesaro had a chance to be a world champion in the WWE, in my opinion, his only his only, I guess, good choice could be either with NXT or NXT UK. So that's that. Plus, I would love to see a match between Cesaro and Walter for the UK Championship. That would be a classic, in my opinion. I would pay to see that. I would actually pay to watch Cesaro versus Walter in the main event of an NXT UK takeover for the UK Championship. Take my money, man. So, do I think Cesaro will be a world champion in WWE? No, I don't. DJ Storms. Oh, man. DJ Storm. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you. He asked, where do you see yourself five years from now? So, I'm 18 now. In five years, I'll be 23, and I'll just be getting done college. Where do I see myself in five years? Living on the East Coast, still watching wrestling, and hopefully um, doing some work for my journalism career goal. Because that's honestly my, my goal. I want to be a journalist. That's what I'm planning on going to college for. Um, is for journalism. Whether I'm a wrestling journalist. Or a sports journalist. Um, that is my goal. Is to go to college for journalism. And then after college. Or do I see myself five years from now. Hopefully. Doing some more journalism work. For my few, my uh, long term job, which is being a journalist for either wrestling or sports. So, thank you for the question. That was a very good question. And I had to think about that one for a while. We got Adam. We got Adam, who's on the channel last night. Shout out to Adam. Uh, some great feedback for the Raw review last night. Adam absolutely went off on the show last night. If you guys did not check out the Raw review, I highly advise you watch it. See me rant and see Adam's rant. Because his rant was pretty epic last night about Monday Night Raw. So if you have not already, check that out here on the channel. But Adam's question is... If you were in charge of WWE, which wrestler would you push on Raw and SmackDown? Now, I'm going to start with Raw first because there's a bunch of names that I could say. Because that roster is stacked, but they are so underutilized, it's not even funny. It's honestly not even funny how underutilized that talented roster is. But if I had to pick one guy... That I would push on the Raw roster. His name is Andrade. And it's Andrade because... I, I First of all, I, I think he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. Number one. And number two... When he got with Zelina Vega in NXT... 
and he was feuding with Johnny Gargano, and then he won the NXT Championship from Drew McIntyre, and then he had that classic match at TakeOver Philadelphia against Johnny Gargano, which I should have been there for. Um, I became a fan of him since. I became a fan of him since he got with Zelina Vega. He is so talented, man. I know the man, he, I know he doesn't speak that good English, but he is so damn good. I do not know how Vince McMahon and Bruce and Kevin Dunn look at Andrade as WWE champion. I think that's just absolutely mind-boggling. He is one of the best wrestlers in the world. And he's stuck in a mediocre tag team with Angel Garza. Who's good in his own right. But Andrade... Andrade just has WWE champion all over him. And the fact that creative doesn't see that... Shame on them. You know, shame on them. Smackdown? What wrestler would I push on Smackdown? Um... I gotta go with Matt Riddle. Um... Matt Riddle, when he first came in on SmackDown, he was put in a feud with Baron Corbin, which did not do him good at all because no one likes Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin is boring, and when you get in a feud with Baron Corbin, uh, good things are not going to happen for you. So they put, they immediately put him in a feud with Baron Corbin. He beat him at Payback, and now he's been off television since Payback because... They don't know what to do with Matt Riddle, so... I'm going to say the same thing for Matt Riddle as I did on Andrade. Matt Riddle has WWE Champion, Universal Champion all over him. If they don't put him at least in the main event scene in the title picture, uh, I think they are doing themselves... Uh, they're not doing themselves good at all, is what I'm trying to say with that, so... Thank you for the question, Adam. We got Wesley Landon Woosley, who asked, Who was the first wrestler that you paid the most attention to when you started watching wrestling? That man is Rey Mysterio. I saw Rey Mysterio on SmackDown in 2008, and I thought, man, he's the coolest man that I have ever seen. I went out, I bought his merchandise, I bought a mask. It's laying around my, my uh, house somewhere. I wish I could find it because I would show you guys, but I have a Rey Mysterio mask, and I was just so, uh, I was just so obsessed with Rey Mysterio when I was a young kid. You know, you know, he's the he just, he's the cool guy, high flying. He does the flips, um, six one nine. You know, Boyaka Boyaka, all that stuff. Um, he was just so cool, in my opinion. He's still cool right now, um, being. Almost an adult, 18 years old. Going back to when I was 6 to now, I still think Rey Mysterio is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, man, I was so obsessed with Rey Mysterio back then. I, I loved him. And I, I, I was clapping and I was, like, jumping whenever he would come out as a little kid. And my dad thought that was the best thing ever when I was just jumping for Rey Mysterio. He would film me every time, too, so... Thank you for the question, Wesley Woosley. Shout out to you. We got two questions from Bonafide Heat, a.k.a. Kevin Garcia. He is actually 12 subscribers away from 700. So if you guys could go subscribe to his channel, I'm sure he would appreciate that. So shout out to Kevin Garcia, Bonafide Heat. He's got two questions for me. First question... What is your favorite wrestling match of all time? I would have to go with John Cena versus CM Punk, Money in the Bank, 2011. What a classic. What an absolute classic that was. Punk, the hometown guy in Chicago who everybody was cheering for. John Cena was the most hated man on the planet Earth that night when he walked into the State Farm Arena in Chicago against CM Punk. He was so hated. He was like the biggest heel in the entire world that night. And the crowd reaction to Punk and Cena, it, it was just perfect. And I loved the match. The story was excellent. And Punk winning and blowing the kiss of Vince McMahon was just 
It's just picture perfect, man. I loved it. The fact that that match only got four stars, I mean, that, I mean, come on. Are you serious? That match only got four stars. In my eyes, that would have easily gotten five stars. That's my favorite match of all time. I remember exactly where I was, too. I was watching this house on the couch at my shore house. I was cheering for CM Punk, and so was my brother. And my, my dad was there, too. So that was fun time. He's then asked his final question. What is the latest book you read? Uh, I read a book called Angela a Angela's Ashes. I had to do it for summer reading, and I took us. I I I did not read it over the summer. I had three days to read the book. I barely read the book. I took notes on it. I did the essay, and I still got a hundred on it. So. That was the latest book that I read was Angela's Ashes, and I don't remember a thing from that book. So, um, thank you for the questions, Bonafide Heat. Kevin Cabaza, shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you. He asks, do you think WWE will ever be as good as it once was? No. No. It will not be as good as it once was because of two names. Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard, and I guess you could throw Kevin Dunn in there too. So three names, Vince, Bruce, and Kevin Dunn. WWE is only going to get worse uh, by every year. 2018 I thought was the worst year. I know 2017 was bad, and 2018 was worse. 2018 was bad, 2019 was worse. 2019 was horrible. 2020 is almost as worse as 2019. I still think 2019 is the worst year ever for WWE. But we got four more months of 2020. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens to these final four months. Then we got five more questions. All of them coming. From the Ace of Wrestling. Follow him on Twitter. You can just look up Ace of Rest the Ace of Wrestling. And it's got a Kazushka Okada profile picture. And you can follow him right there. He asked me five questions. Huge, huge shout out to you, bro. Thank you for the great questions that you sent to me. And he asked, first out of five, he asked. What who, what who are your top 10 favorite wrestlers? Oh, I, I regret not writing this down. I'm going to go number one, uh, Cody Rhodes. Number two, Adam Cole. Number three, Orange Cassidy. Number four, Brody Lee. Number five, Bray Wyatt. Number six, Kevin Owens. Number seven, um, Darby Allen. Number eight, uh, I totally regret not writing this down. Number eight, Io Shirai. Okay, I remember that. Number ten, um, did I say Kevin Owens? Number ten, Kevin Owens. And, uh, no, number nine, Kevin Owens. I'm sorry. And number, number ten... Oh, man, I regret not writing this down. Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus. So, Cody Rhodes, Adam Cole, Orange Cassidy, Brody Lee, Drew McIntyre. I believe I had Darby, Kevin Owens, Io Shirai, uh, Luchasaurus, and... Um, holy crap, I don't, I don't remember... I, I, I totally regret not writing that down, but whatever. Um, second question he asked was, what's your favorite error that you watched? Probably the Ruthless Aggression era in 2008, because that's what I grew up watching. Uh, that's what I grew up watching uh, when I was a youngster. So I would have to go with the Ruthless Aggression era of professional wrestling and the WWE. Who was your favorite tag team of all time? Uh, 
I'm gonna go with the Hardy Boys. Salt the same I'm say for Rey Mysterio. I'm gonna say the same thing for the Hardy Boys. I when I see these guys, I thought they were very cool. They were Jeff Hardy was the high flying guy, Matt Hardy not so much. But I, I just thought they were very cool. They were so over. Uh they were just, you know, Team Extreme, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy, the Hardy Boys. And then the stuff they did in Impact Wrestling was incredible as well. So uh, my favorite tag team of all time. Probably the Hardy Boys. Dudley Boys are close as well, but I'm going to go with the Hardy Boys for this one. The final two questions. What do you think about AEW? I love AEW. I absolutely love AEW. Do I think it is perfect? No. No wrestling company is ever perfect. But AEW has gave us an alternative. It's a fresh product. It's exciting. There's exciting fuse. There's wrestlers that I actually care about. And the show is good every single week. The show is good every single week. And I get excited for the show every single week. And you want, at the end of the show, you want a feeling of, man, I can't wait for next week's show. I don't get that with Raw. I don't get that for SmackDown. I don't get that for NXT nowadays. I get it from AEW every week. Every single week I'm done watching AEW, I'm like, man, I can't wait for next week's show. I want to see what happens next week on Dynamite. And that's what I think is the biggest thing to me. So that's what I think about AEW. And then the final question here on the 200 subscriber one year anniversary Q&A. What do you think about the current state of the WWE? I think it's trash. I, I think it's trash because of Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard, and the entire creative team that writes Raw and SmackDown. The shows are not good. Raw is absolutely pathetic. SmackDown sucks. Um, that's what I think about the current state of the WWE. They're not exciting whatsoever. Um, Retribution's a failure. Raw Underground sucks. Um, they bury the new talent. They don't... They they make Keith Lee feel unimportant week one. And he's not important right now. The pay-per-view builds are lackluster at best. They're not exciting. They don't get you excited for the pay-per-view. And, you know, sometimes the pay-per-view is good. Sometimes it sucks. But that's what I think about the WWE, the current state. And NXT, NXT is having a terrible year. Outside of TakeOver Portland... And take over 30. They have not had a good year whatsoever. This is the worst year I remember. Ever. In NXT. And they better pick their game up. And. Instead of. Having NXT influence. On the Raw and Smackdown shows. They're having. Raw and Smackdown influence. On the NXT shows. And that it's completely ruining the show. So. I'm going to end it off with that, and I want to thank each and every single one of you who who um, put in your questions for the Q&A video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We got a loaded week. I'll be back tomorrow night with AEW Dynamite, um, NXT. I don't know if I'm going to do NXT this week. I have a scrimmage on Thursday night uh, for my football team. So when I get home, I might upload the um, Clash of Champions preview and predictions on Thursday night with Cassius Cam. So there might not be an NXT review this week. Friday, you get SmackDown. And then Sunday, you're getting the Clash of Champions review here on the channel. Comment down below what you think about the Q&A video. Uh, that I just did. Hit the like button uh, for the support. Follow me on Twitter at Colin underscore Joseph. We're losing a couple followers over there. I don't know what's going on. I was at 1,361 followers and I lost seven followers. I don't know if it's just Twitter taking away the robot accounts or what, but follow me on Twitter at Joseph at Colin underscore Joseph. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night for AEW Dynamite review right here. On the Big Fight Field channel. 
We got a big six-man tag. Moxley, Will Hobbs, and Darby Allen versus Lance Archer, Ricky Starks, and Brian Cage. Uh, Orange Cassidy versus Brody Lee for the TNT Championship. And we also got Late Night Dynamite, which I'll be talking about tomorrow here on the channel as well. So have a good night and stay safe, guys.